Welcome back, dear friends. Thank you for all the um, get well soon and birthday greetings. Greatly appreciated. It was very nice, very kind. Now, let's get on with what I've been doing. I haven't been doing them because yesterday I came down on Monday and I thought, oh, I could just twiddle and tinker around. And I thought, no, John, no. What you need to be doing is to be getting on with this. Because that's the date, the due date is coming up. Um, so I must get on with that. So what I ended up doing yesterday, because I felt a little bit under the weather still, was I made stuff. Plastic stuff. Let me show you. Steady cam on. Both hands ready. Camera focused on that spot there. So the first thing I thought I'd make, these are all the plastic parts. From the mechanisms and things. These two, it's very nice. There's the stand, and the great thing about the laser cutter, this is 10mm acrylic, is that you can cut it out obviously that way, and if you want holes like that to fix it down, um, basically I just cut two titchy little squares or triangles out, um, and that's perfect because then it just allows you to drill them in the right place. Now the purpose of this is that is the tensioner and see how it works there actually there's a spring that joins two little links look at these beautiful little links have you ever seen the like and it basically the chain rolls over and we're using ball chain obviously and ball chain is fantastic because you can change direction with it um, and these bearings these grooved bearings are perfect so it pulls around like this. And the idea with the tensioner, because obviously, well, let's jump ahead. Here's one I made earlier, a pulley for the ball chain. You have to get the pitch just right. And when you've just bought a new roll of ball chain, because the old one ran out and you realise that even though it says it's the same size, it isn't slightly and you have to redesign anything. It is a joy. So this one works now with this reel of ball chain. But you can see it causes lots of friction grip so that the ball chain can actually move different parts of the mechanism when required but you need tension so that's what this is so it's going to move up and down like that with um, the two pulleys that are going to keep the tension they okay, think cool so that's nice and right down I mean it's ridiculously over engineered there's a piece of brass sleeve in there so that because it screws together with an M6 or M5 screw just to reduce friction or something or other. But I love it. It's in the plans, so I'm going to make it. What else is that? Oh, there's that nice piece. You can see where I got the idea from that. It's bridges, I think it's called, on a musical instrument, like a string instrument or whatever. Um, I love those two slots and violins and things. Yeah, they're string instruments, aren't they? Um, and this goes at the top to support the... Um, lens holding assembly thing little touches like that are nice then there's this which sits like that on the base and has a four mil dowel sticking up off it for the drum like thing which stops all the chimes from knocking into each other and as you can see this is made by cutting out that bit on the laser cutter and then this bit and just slotting them together and it's just it's nice because you know it's overkill but it does look really attractive once it's all sprayed up. And if you like transparent acrylic, it looks really attractive now. Then there's the gears. These are the gears that are going to um, engage with the edge of the carousel. Two bearings, there's room for two bearings, one in the top, one in the bottom. And they're gonna be mounted on that. Now that's nice. This is what I keep wittering on about, the, um, the adjuster. Because as you can see, this is offset. Prior to that I had an offset spindle and the only way you could get to the spindle to actually adjust this further and nearer to the carousel was um, by taking the whole thing to pieces. Stupid idea, because then you'd have to try it, put it back together and see if it fitted and then adjust it again. This works from the back, as you can see how, because I remember I drilled that hole in the base. Now that sits in the hole, this sits on there and then it gives you perfect, I think it's about 3mm offset or 5mm, so it's about 10mm between the movement it can go laterally. And that's really nice. And building this thing, well, you use a jig like this. It is so simple, but effective. You just, I sat that in there, 
this was loose still put some glue on it dropped it in and it's all lined up and perfect to go otherwise try to get that lined in the center it just shows you the wonder of jigs so that's good too then there's this little bit and this bit supports the mirror the laser cut four mil three mil acrylic mirror that sits in the middle of the carousel now this is the perfect candidate i was thinking um for 3d printing if anyone because some a few people have asked me and said um could you show us how you use the software that you use this would be a perfect opportunity for a project to demonstrate how to use, in this case, 3D Builder, which is the free um, 3D building, not surprisingly, uh, software application thing. Um, do let me know, because I could do this as a 3D printed item. Quite nice. The perfect one, because it could also print the threads and everything else. Yeah, let me know in the comments. Right, now that was the doorbell you just heard. What could have been delivered? Good old Orbital Sanders. I only ordered it yesterday. I, got, I keep running out of these things, these washers, 10 millimeter. it says, read it, M10, Form B, flat washer, self-colour, brass. Lovely, catchy little name there. Um, because I use them lots in all the machines that I have the Munson rings on, and I keep running out, and I keep ordering to like 100 and 200, but everything is going up in cost so much. I think about four years ago they were three or four, perhaps five p each. Now you can find up to twenty five p each per washer. That's ludicrous, I tell you. So I've decided to invest in washers. Seemed like a good idea at the time because the cost is rocketing so quickly now that it's sort of like trying to jump on and just catch it at the right time. So I've gone and bought a thousand. A thousand, you say? And I thought, that doesn't really look like a thousand. I don't know what a thousand washers look like. But then I noticed the box in the box. That's what a thousand washers looks like. That plus that. So I'm all washered up. Washed up, more like. So today's project. Da, da, da. What a lovely sheet. I do like this sheet. As someone pointed out, it looks like it was drawn on the back of an envelope, and I suppose it could be an envelope size. Um, but it's the chime mechanism, and I'm so pleased to have these notes, because I've got all the bits cut out, and now I need to drill this and then stick that and get it all together in the right order. Even two parts made from 8mm acrylic. Who would have thought... Um, it's the only things that I make from 8mm acrylic, but they need to fit within a slot. I will go ahead and get these lovely little pieces glued together. And it's the sort of thing, because look, with this bit, that sits in there, and you get one of these either side. And what I did is there's this nice little decor thing here. So many times I thought, well, let's cover that with glue. And then we'll just stick this on. And then you stick that on and you think, oh look, there's loads of super glue poking through. We're ridiculous. So you do a little sketch. No glue. Put the glue there. And it's the problem solved. Or another problem solved. Right, let's stop talking and get on with getting this together. The doorbell's ringing off the ook. Spend an evening hunched over a hot computer, hopefully ordering the right stuff. Yeah, reap the rewards. So, three more of these gauges have arrived. I thought, like I've just been talking about, actually, that I'd stock up on these, because you just don't know how long you're going to be able to get things for, or how much the price is going to go up. So that's nice. They're the gauges. Well, actually, that one. It's always a way when I start making these videos. I just can't stop. Now, I need to glue that flat on there, void the reflections. So I've sanded the back of that flat, and I'm going to use the glass again. Super glue does stick to glass reasonably well, so I've put a bit of that brown packing tape. Then I, then I know I can drip some glue in there, and that will be absolutely perpendicular. And then I can stick the sides on. So that's now perpendicular, and you can see where the glue is because it's gone completely transparent. And I remember not to put any in that bit down there. Lovely, and I've glued it all the right way around. I've only been out to the kitchen to check the original about eight times, but I, I think I must add another drawing actually, just to make sure I get these stuck on the right way around and that the right way in. But that's great, another big step forward. That's quite a complicated part. That's the top bit. 
which pushes out a cam that way which sort of energizes or stores potential energy in the hammer and then it reaches a little vertical cam here that lifts the mechanism and releases the potential energy into kinetic energy so the hammer can strike the chime and then repeat ad finitum and it works, this is the important thing, it works both ways round so that the pitch can rise if the pressure is increasing and fall if the pressure is decreasing. And these two bits need to have a 13mm hole, a very precise one, to take a bearing. Because the laser cutter cuts a slot with a slight draft angle, because the laser gets weaker as it gets deeper through the material, it's not really any good. But it is good for getting an initial hole set up that's slightly smaller by sort of like half a millimetre or whatever. Then I use this uh, drill bit, 30 mil drill, which I've gra ground off the cutting edges that rip up wood because that's not a good idea when drilling plastic. So I know that is perfectly centred and is 13 millimetres diameter. Apparently, the next thing I need to do is to glue in the five. Um, vertical cams. There we are. Chimes hanging from elastic below. Chain, ball chain around the middle, and the complicated mechanism which I've just cut out on the laser cutter from 8mm acrylic on the top. Let's get on with something else more exciting. I need a way of fixing that little spindle from the stepper motor onto this pulley, the chain, ball chain pulley which has got two of those pretty things one on the side to keep the chain on it. Fairly simple, I hear you cry. But no, wrong, check. Here's one sheet of ideas. And I used to get in, I got in so many problems with this idea. Um, it's sort of catch-22. Yes, you can get the pulley on, but then once you've slid it in and put it on there, you haven't got anywhere else. It's just, it took ages. There's one sheet, here's another one. Two more ideas that didn't work. Finally, use this one. This one. Job number one is part off the end because there's a big hole in it. Don't use your finger. The drawing says it needs to be 30 long. Probably shouldn't show this bit because it's completely the wrong way to do it. But once I finish this project and have time, as I mentioned before, to um, set up Alan's digital readout on this lathe, very kindly made me, um, this won't be a problem. But for now, I'm going to cheat and use a ruler. This is a fairly, well, it's a new um, rod of brass and they always vibrate something rotten when they stick out the back. This time I used a cunningly placed a toilet, an nearly used up toilet roll and it stopped it shaking around because otherwise it hits the resonant frequency and it's all over the place. Toilet rolls. Useful to prevent things going wrong and very, very useful when they do. The first of many mistakes is the bearing and of course it won't push on there because the bearing in turn diameter is 12 and this rod is 12. This rod needs to be um, 11.9. <laughs> Not very good at maths. Quick change chucks are nice. You just take out the old tool and slot in the new, and there's the height adjuster there for each individual tool cutter, and you tighten it, and that's it. Isn't that lovely? So I'm going to have to do this prop I like because I want to take 0 .0 0.05 off both sides. I'm just going to touch that on there. Then I set that to naught. There we are. Let's just see if that will fit on there now. Yeah, that's it. Look at that. Perfect. Now I need to drill a 5mm hole 8mm deep into the end for the motor shaft. So I'll start with a centre drill. Then I will change it for a 5mm drill. Forgive the arms and things, but I find that they're quite useful. There. Now I'm going to set this to naught. I don't even know. Yeah, there we are, to naught. 
I'm gonna just line it up like that. Like that. <laughs> no idea what I'm doing. And I'm gonna wind the handle in five times. Oh, what was it? I've forgotten what the measurement is now. How deep did it have to be? Eight. Because I like living on the edge. It's nice. So now we've got the hole drilled for the motor. Now I need to drill. <laughs> recipe for disaster. I need to drill the two holes which are going to tap, I think M4, through there for the two grub screws. 3.3mm drill. Now I wish, a lovely V-block, I wish I had a better clamp for this, but the, the horseshoe things are really tall and stop the chuck coming down. So I'm going to have to resort on my fingers. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you need better clamping. Anyway, I'm not damaged. Actually, I'm not happy with that because the motor's got two flats on it. I want a grub screen from either side. I'm not going to make a new one. I'm just going to do it in a more grown-up fashion, hopefully. <laughs> That's better. Note to self, do it like this in the future. Good. Now I've got a hole, I'm going to use one of the drill taps because it will sort of follow itself, follow it through. As a final touch, I've just touched a 6mm drill onto the edge of each of these and it just makes a nice little, um, it gets rid of any floof that's sticking up. Now the important thing is that the bearing will slide all the way along it does. Another useful thing you can do with a pillar drill in this case I drilled out the hole in that pulley to 12 millimeters and I then because it's stiff I then used the pillar drill just to push it down and because I'd cut off the bottom of this brass rod it's absolutely flat so I know that's perpendicular and everything's perfect. And then to glue it on, if you ever need to do this sort of thing, I should have shown you, but I'd um, laser cut the hole slightly smaller than 12 with three little one millimetre diameter holes around the outside, sort of halfway in. So when I drilled it out, it leaves three little slots, channels that I can then drip super glue in. And capillary action takes them all round and it's glued in a treat. I need to paint all those parts. I need the spray booth. I need to move these out of the way. And I need to fill the dishwasher. Here's a pretty acrylic garden. Interesting acrylic shapes that I've tried to stand and support. So I can paint all the salient parts without having to wait for them to dry and then turn them over and all the rest of the faff because they will need two coats. Ziggy's also come in an hour early to try and tell me it is time for a walk. <laughs> What a beautiful yawn. Oh.